Evening, folks. Evening. Welcome back. It's good to see you tonight. Appreciate you being back to the service tonight. Looking forward to uh, the teens uh, sharing with us about their uh, mission trip. Matt sharing the Word of God with us tonight. So looking forward to that. We're not going to take up a whole lot of time at the start, but uh, we get ready to uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Remember Vicki Bazin? Uh, Johnny was up here today giving out food at the pantry, and she she fell at home while he was gone. And I got a text and it said it looked like they was going to be going to the hospital. I don't know if she got cut or broke something or what. But anyway, remember Vicki Bazin uh, tonight in your prayers. And uh, very quickly, any other household prayer requests tonight? Yes. Yeah. Um, my mom, grandma, has pneumonia, and my father has a child. Okay. All right. Remember Audrey's. Her grandmother? Yeah. Audrey's yeah. grandmother. James? Uh, my mom, I told you earlier this week, she had uh, two toes, ended up taking half a foot. After that, she ended up in the uh, hospital Friday. She ended up with a congestive heart failure. So she'll be in there for three days. Her birthday. Remember James's parents? Did you with his mom and dad? James? Doris and her other Yeah. Remember Doris? Uh, she, well, I'll tell you what, she is hurt too. She, uh, she called Saturday morning and her little dog was out. And her little dog's in about as bad a shape as she is. He can't get up the steps, and she couldn't get down the steps to get him. And so, uh, she, bless her heart, she's, uh, she's having a time. She needs our prayers and encouragement. So Amen. I think Brother uh, Jerry said the other Wednesday night to give her a call if you, if you think about it. And uh, just let her know that you're praying for her and thinking about it. Any others? Um, I did call her the other day. I'm sorry. I did call her the other day and see how she was doing. And she said that she's in a lot more pain now than she yeah. has been in yeah. She's just hoping and praying that the uh, surgery is on the schedule. Yeah, it's supposed to be September the 8th. Yeah, but I mean, I heard of the news that the blind and the father trying to figure out if they're going to have surgeries or not, but she's going to have one, so we're going to have to pray that the Lord is still on the schedule. Amen. Amen. Jane? My brother in South Carolina, he's having knee strokes. He had the blood clot on the brain and he's breaking loose. Mm -hmm. so, What's his name? Gary. Gary. All right. Now, Gary, good night. Bob? Uh, keep uh, Julie in your prayers uh, for, for that COVID mess. Sure. Um, she she likes to keep uh, checked on Mr. Winfield, and it kind of, it can be a conflict of interest in her position. Right. Uh, but uh, keep, uh, keep her in your prayers. Amen. Yeah, keep Julie in prayers, all, all of our nurses yeah. and medical staff. Jerry, do you have a prayer request? Did I see you raise your hand? Your daughter, Amy? All right. Uh, remember Quentin Siffer? He's eight years old. He had very major surgery this afternoon on his brain. Yeah. Just that the Lord would see him through this. Any others? I got some family members that don't know the Lord, and my heart's really heavy for them. Amen. Amen. For those that are lost tonight. Any others? Bill? Pray for my uh, stepson, Greg. Uh -huh. He has brain cancer. Uh, he's had radiation and surgery. The uh, chemo, he's having problems taking the chemo. So, we pray for him. And what was his name? Greg. Greg. All right, I'm Greg and I. Continue to pray for uh, Daryl Lovetta. And we'll watch out for <coughs> Amber. Um, I once again want to thank everybody for their thoughts and prayers and food and everything. And also, my neighbor, um, I don't know if this was mentioned last week, but her and her husband both work at the daycare, and they were both hospitalized with COVID. Um, he was first, and then like two or three days later, she went in, and she passed like within a few days. Um, and they're young, like in their mid-40s. Um, and so he's still quarantined. Now he was discharged, but he's still quarantined. Um, but that's, that's, that's going to be a really tough time. Sure, sure. Remember that time. All right. Yeah. 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 Richard, Jane and I have a guest for dinner today. She's 87 years old. She's fried a spring chicken. But she has cramps from her blood vessels leaking or something. And I asked her to see if I could do it. And she said, the doctors told her that her age, she would be able to go through it. Yeah. But uh, she said, don't worry. I know somebody can help me, so just pray. <laughs> <laughs> and her name is Reese. Reese. Amen. Bob? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, they had that uh, school board meeting down there today. I went to it, and uh, well, I found out that uh, it's really easy to criticize uh, a lot of those board members when we ought to be praying for them. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of criticizing and not much praying. So they they got to be in a tough place to make decisions. We need to pray for them. Amen. Whether we like their decisions or not. Amen, brother. We, we need to be praying for the decision makers, uh, whether it's school Amen. board or, yeah. or any. Right. I mean, we just, uh, and you're exactly right. We, sometimes we tend to criticize when we definitely should be praying. So. Amen. Remember our, our children as they go back to school and colleges and things, they just, uh, just a lot of things going on. So let's remember them in prayer. Uh, Y'all remember Midori? Her birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday. <laughs> Father, we thank you again for this day that you've given to us, and, and Lord, just a, it's always a blessing to be able to come into your house. Uh, as uh, David said, we were glad when it was time to go, when they said, let us go into the house of God. And so, Father, we thank you for this time that we have to once again come together, to uh, fellowship together, to uh, worship together, to pray together, and to uh, draw nigh unto you uh, through your word. And God, we just, uh, we're so thankful tonight that our young people are going to minister in the service. We thank you for each one of our young people tonight, and uh, Lord, that they have the opportunity to be able to go and minister in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, just looking forward to how uh, you use them to uh, to touch the kingdom, and looking forward to hearing how uh, you touch their lives uh, as they were involved. And, and so, Father, we uh, we thank you and we praise you for that. We ask your blessings to be upon them tonight as they minister. Uh, pray for your anointing upon Matt as he preaches the word of God, and for the young people as they sing and share their testimonies tonight. Father, we, uh, we come before the throne of grace with praise and thanksgiving for you, uh, but at the same time with hearts that are heavy uh, for those that are suffering tonight. We ask that you continue to have your hands upon them. Uh, Lord, we want to lift up Mr. Wingfield to you tonight and uh, just ask that you would minister to him. Uh, Father, we thank you that his wife is doing better, and we just pray, God, that you would have your hands upon her. Uh, Lord, for all those that are dealing with COVID, uh, we ask that you would uh, touch and Pour your grace out upon them. We pray, Father, for those that are dealing with cancer. And Lord, we pray for those families that are grieving. And Lord, just so many families today that are grieving the loss of loved ones, and whether it be COVID or some other tragedy. Father, we just ask that you would comfort hearts tonight and minister to them. But, Father, as we, uh, as we gather here today, we just ask, Lord, that you would lead, guide, and direct the service. We pray, Heavenly Father, once again, you'd speak to our hearts. And Father, I pray you'd change our lives tonight. Uh, Lord, we, uh, we do want to remember those that are in authority, uh, whether it would be a school board or uh, right on up to our, our president. Uh, Father, our nation uh, needs for you to touch them and uh, open their eyes. And give them wisdom that comes from above. So, Father, we ask that you just be with all of those in authority tonight. We pray for our military. Uh, we pray for uh, all the situation that's going on around the world uh, where people are in danger. God, we just pray for your safekeeping. Father, we uh, want to tell you that we love you. We thank you for loving us. And we give you praise in Christ's name tonight. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we like to do this in youth group sometimes. So we're going to stand up and we're going to sing a worship song on the screen. Okay. <laughs>
What a good time we get to worship God. Uh, Amen. Lay it all at His feet. We get yes. to do it one day. What a blessing. Uh, just got a few announcements. I'm glad y'all are here this evening. Uh, tomorrow, sign ministry, last day, I believe it is. I challenge everyone to come out. Uh, got the ladies' meeting coming up. Got camp meeting coming up. Yes. Two or three weeks. So be in prayer for that. Be in prayer for the evangelists. I challenge you, it's not on announcements. I challenge you to be here for Sunday school. Amen. Uh, not just because I'm teaching. Don't show up when I'm teaching, but <laughs> uh, I'm just teaching the scene, so you're a little bit older than that. But uh, I challenge you to come. Uh, yes, Steve's sir. message this morning, if you didn't come, I pray I challenge you to get a tape. Um, but it went hand in hand with the lesson. Right. The lesson right. was God's Word guides us. And, uh, you know, I try to challenge the teenagers, but really I'm trying to challenge myself. If we took everything we went through each day and used God's Word to guide us, Go ahead, what kind of change people we would be sure. for Him. Sure. Uh, so I do challenge you uh, to get involved in Sunday school. It's changed my life forever. Uh, as a teenager coming up in Sunday school, the teachers I had, I know Dwayne, uh, he changed my life forever through his teaching. And I praise, praise the Lord for that. Praise and, the Lord. Uh, so I challenge you to come for that. Uh, be here for camp meeting. I uh, got ISI coming up. Uh, any announcements that I missed? Don't, there's one in there about uh, the new building over there. We're getting ready for the insulators to come and then it'll be sheetrock. And when we first frame the building, people have an opportunity to go and write their favorite verses of scripture on the post, uh, the studs in there and different things like that. I know there's some people not able to do that at that time. So it's open this evening after the service. If people want to go over and write their scriptures on the studs, they, they're more than welcome to. Okay. All right. All right. Well, the worship the Lord will give. Amen.
but I just wanted to come up and let you know, Ryan's going to play a video. Um, uh, I'll get up and brag on them in a minute. I want to tell you all how, how, how well they did, but I want you to see the video first. And then a few of them are going to get up and uh, talk about uh, their experience on the trip and, and what the Lord did in, uh, in and through them on the trip. Uh, but I want you all to watch this video first. They picked out the music for it and uh, just want you to see some, some of the photos from the trip.
so time to shake today, today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I ain't gonna let it slip away. I'm gonna be joyful. First off, I want to thank the Lord for saving me. Amen. Amen. And give me the opportunity to go on this trip. Um, one thing that God helped me. One thing that God helped me with on this trip was um, to be more thankful. Because uh, as we were as I was on this trip, I realized that um not everybody has what I have. Amen. And um, I just need to be more thankful for what I do have and grateful. And um um and to not take for granted the good things in life and that uh, to Because if don't take the good, don't take things for granted, good things in life for granted. Because um, at any moment God could take those away. And I had a lot of fun on this trip. And um, I was I had a lot of fun on this trip. I was blessed that God used me in many ways. Amen. Good.
I just graduated and it's all behind me and like it was one of the most fun things I've ever experienced in my life with high school but it's also one of the hardest and Joyce was saying how she would not want to be in high school in this day and how it's super hard and I will be the first to tell you that if it wasn't for a good church family and a good youth group and Matt and Joyce there's no way in this world that I could have made it through it and to have good friends and a good youth group to come to when um, you're in a trial in your life is the most important thing. So anyway, on to um, before the trip. As we got ready for the trip, Matt started talking to us about witnessing and how to have the confidence to just go up to people and talk about it as if it's something you love, just like your hobbies and your passions and stuff like that. So. As we got closer, we got to talking um, about it more in depth, and two days before the missions trip, I had the opportunity to witness to another teenager, and it really just starts making you feel like um, whenever you, whenever you, like in high school now, they're all about temporary things, and how they do that just to um, make them feel good and then do it again, and after that happened, it was like that whole feeling, but in a good way, and how I want that to happen again, and how you want to be a witness for the Lord. Amen. So anyway, we left for the trip, and before I left, Mom said bye, and don't do something stupid, <laughs> which is what I do basically 24-7, and um, I basically try to get myself in situations that I shouldn't, and all this bunch of stuff. So we left, and the first day we um, painted floors and painted stuff like that, and worked. And then the second day we went to a food pantry, and worked there, and uh, we did like an assembly line of untrailing food. My assembly line group was very, very fast. Once it got past Addie, it hit a stump. And they would, we would get to go in and they'd be like, slow down, somebody dropped it. And I'm like, y'all, we got to pick up the pace, you know? So anyway, we did that. And that night, Matt said, we're going to go back to the hotel. And y'all going to get a little bit of rest and we're going to have us a basketball game. I was like, that's what I'm talking about, you know? I hate basketball. I'm awful at it. But, you know, we're going to try. So we get there and... Uh, some girls were like, I'm not playing. And I was like, okay, I won't play. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, no, I'm going to play. I'm going to play. So Trina's like, I need a sub. And so I went in. <laughs> I went in. And uh, Zach went out to make a three. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm really going to get him. And I got him. I, mean, I fell all over him. <laughs> so anyway, Joyce is like, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I got up, I started walking, I was like, I'm not fine. And so <laughs> that's how that all started. And um, Addie was like, you want to go with me? I was like, yeah, I want you to go with me. And uh, that was just a disaster. But anyway, Mom called me and she was like, me and Daddy's going to come up there and get you. I said, if you get in that car, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> and so I said, do not come get me. There ain't nothing going to help that. So anyway, um, now that we're on this trip and we get back, um, that night I hurt my ankle, the girls had devotions, and when we got in Joyce's room, she got to talking to us about how that the Lord, you can't be, when you accept Christ as your Savior, that doesn't mean you're not going to fail Him, and that doesn't mean you're not going to let Him down, and she put it in a form that, like, we understood a lot better, was like, I can't, like, when me and Hannah started talking a couple months ago, like, I couldn't start being friends with Hannah if I didn't put any work into being friends with Hannah. Like, I can't go t three weeks without talking to her and then say that she's my friend. So, we talked a lot about that. We talked about a lot about gratefulness, and when I got back, I told Mom and Dad, I was like, you wouldn't believe you're sitting here in Archdale or wherever, and you're like, you gotta go out of the country to see poverty level, or you have to go out of the state to see somebody who doesn't have nothing or out of the country, but you can just go two states up, and it's like a whole different world. Yeah. And um, I told them at that night in devotions that it really makes you think beyond what you say you're grateful for every day. Like sometimes, you know, in youth group, Matt will ask the boys, you know, what are you grateful for? Food, you know, and <laughs> stuff like that, or like, you know, 
players like baseball, you know, and whatever. So, so it really made me think deeper into like, like you, some of these people, like when they have something going on, you know, or when I have something in my life, you know, Matt's like first call or Joyce is first call. And a lot of people don't have that. And when you sit down and think about it, you could just have absolutely nothing of this world, but still with a church family, you have it all. So that's really made me think or whatever. And so when I got home, uh, the ankle never did really get better. And uh, mom took me back to the doctor and uh, they put me in this boot, okay? And if any of y'all know me, I, well, I'm outside a lot, do a lot of stuff outside. And I was like, I'm not wearing this boot. I'm not wearing it. Mom said, well, I'm going to tell that doctor to put you in a hard cast. <laughs> I said, if you do, then I'm just going to walk in it. So anyway, uh, he put me in this boot. And y'all know it's been hot. I mean, hot outside. And Mom said, you're not ruining that $200 boot. <laughs> so I'm out there feeding the dogs and training the dogs with a trash bag on my leg. <laughs> and it's like 100 degrees out here. And so anyway, I was sitting there and I was doing something outside, I don't remember what it was, and I looked down and I was like, sometimes whenever I get hurt, I'm like, I don't really get mad that I'm hurt, I get mad because I can't do nothing, and it's hot, and I just want to get better like that. But it hit me, I was like, this is exactly what God's trying to show you, that, yeah, you want, I want to be, I look at all these fellow Christians and stuff, and I'm like, I want to be like them, and I want to be like them now, just like, I was like, I want this foot to be better now. But I don't want to wear the boot. I don't want to put ice on it. I don't want to take care of it. Just like I don't want to get up earlier to study my Bible sometimes. I don't want to ask that lady if she knows Christ. But that's the only way that you're going to get there is if you work hard at it. And you work hard and build that friendship with Christ. So, I say all that to say that we had a great time on the uh, mission trip. We had a blast. Um, I apologize for some of those pictures. Okay. Hunter took my shoes midday, and I think they were yours. Somebody's hiking shoes is what I was wearing all day because Hunter took my shoes. So I said, now I'm going to look like some, I don't know. It was awful. But we <laughs> had a great time, and um, I'm super thankful for Matt and Joyce and the um, opportunity to be in youth group. Um, it's just been a blessing, and I'm thankful for all of y'all that uh, have a part in my life. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs>
is that it showed it, it conveyed in my heart to have more of a willingness to do things for Christ and just not be so lazy about things. And because just like Trinity was saying, these people, I mean, we were riding down with Bruce and just around like neighborhoods and stuff, and some of these houses, it's like they were living in them, and you would think, no way they're even sustaining any kind of family in this building. And so I, I feel like I, I just take for granted everything that I do have, and that I just need to be more willing, since I do have the, you know, resources and the, the, the money and just all this stuff to be able to go out and tell people about Christ and just do my part. And so this gave me more of a, a like conviction to be willing, like willing to go out there and just do more for him. But um, yeah, we had a blast on this trip. My, probably one of my favorite things out of everything that we did is just having the girls' night devotion, and that's just because even in Miss Pat's, we we had one also, and it's just it's so nice to have an environment that you can talk about anything and just know that you're not judged and know that they're there for you and they're more, they're wanting to see you grow just as much as they're wanting to. And so when we had the devotion with Joyce that night, I mean, we all just kind of let loose and we were all crying. And it's just, it's really nice to have that relationship with people that aren't my immediate family that I can talk to. But um, another fun part of the trip was when we went tubing. Uh, I don't even think we would have made it through if it wasn't for Dalton because he trekked us along the whole way. <laughs> Because there were some parts that, I mean, were bad. They were rocky, and we couldn't even stand up. We were tripping, skinning our knees. I mean, you name it, we were doing that. And Dalton, he, he willingly got out and pulled us on. But um, anyways, that's probably my experience with this trip. And I just, I just thank Matt and Joyce for just allowing us this opportunity to just go out and share the gospel and learn new things and just grow in Christ. Well, for the ones that know me, I'm Hunter, and for the ones that don't know me, I'm Hunter. <laughs> switch the trailer and stuff, but anyway, I was the only boy that wanted to talk. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, uh, Matt never tells us where we're going. It's always a guess, and uh, he, he'll tell us, like, it's 15 hours, it's like under 15 hours away, so you're thinking, like, it's far off, and we didn't go for, like, four hours. <laughs> I mean, you're guessing the wrong states, but, uh, That's long enough in the car with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to music, aggravating that. But, uh, yeah, leading up to the trip, we uh, were talking about leading people to the Lord, and uh, like, you never know who you're going to come in contact with. And, uh, yeah, just talking about that, and he gave us a word of this book to use to help us, and we all had a good time with that. And then, uh, it's like, as you see in the pictures, like, the houses and stuff just ain't the same around here. And it's like, the mountains, and there's mountains everywhere. You've seen the mountain up there, 4,100 feet in the air. And uh, just a different environment. But, uh, and then we got there and we met Bruce. I don't know if any of y'all know Bruce. Bruce says whatever comes to his mind. Uh, <laughs> different, different breed. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he kind of gave us orders to do it at the church and, uh, like, work and stuff. Of course, you know, Matt didn't do anything, but uh, <laughs> the guys helped a lot. And, uh, uh, the girls painted the floor, and the guys did the hard work. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, we got done with the work first day, and we went that night, and I think we watched the play. And that play, man, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we went on it, but it might have been the most boring thing I've ever seen. I think I see all of those and all back there. <laughs> and then, and then, um, anyways, anyways, and then that, I think after that, we got, we got uh, to a fish thing, we got to a fish thing, and a uh, fish restaurant. 
<laughs> and me and Ashton and Colvin and Philip all got crab legs, right? You see, we didn't see how much it cost, we didn't see nothing. And I think Matt got the tip, Matt got the check, and for our table it was like $180. <laughs> <laughs> just, just off our food. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he said we're gonna have to work that off. But, if uh, anybody yeah. needs their car washed, I've got three or four. <laughs> that really, got to work something off. <laughs> but, yeah, every night we had a devotion where the guys and the girls split off, and uh, that went good. And the girls they cried a little bit. We didn't really cry. We don't show emotions like that. But, um, <laughs> then we had the basketball game. We had the basketball game, and. Uh, Man, I mean, you know, he calls fouls, and then uh, Hannah, she got MVP. I think that's the most shots she's ever made in her career. But, uh, yeah, we went that play, and there was a girl there, Matt, Matt seen, and uh, her name was Sadasa, and it happened to be Bruce's granddaughter. And so we went to church, we went to church Sunday, and she sung there, and Dalton's like, oh, Hunter, there's your, there's your girl right there. And uh, we got done and stuff, and uh, we, we went and ate lunch with the church. And uh, here comes here comes Dalton, and he says, Hunter, I'll give you a hundred dollars. You go get her number. And they're like, All right. And uh, I guess he told Matt what was going on. And Matt tells Bruce, and Bruce gets up. He said, Hey, young man, come here. Like, All right. And uh, he takes me, and he takes that Hadassah girl, his granddaughter, and says, This boy right here will give a hundred dollars just get this girl. There's <laughs> in front of the whole church. <laughs> And so Matt kind of set me up on that, but uh, yeah, I didn't get the number. But uh, <laughs> and on the way home, I, every song that popped up on the radio, Matt had to make fun of me. Just had something to do with that girl. But, uh, yeah, we had a good time. And uh, on the last night, we all came together. The girls and the guys all came together in the match room. And Matt asked us how is Jesus speaking speaking to us on this trip. And I mean, for most of y'all that know me, I play a bunch of sports, and I feel like Jesus kind of wants to use me in sports, kind of, and uh, talk about the Lord kind of through my sports teams, because it's getting bad out here. But, uh, you know, I mean, like Hannah says, you go into a public school, you meet a lot of people that say they're Christians that don't make the right decisions. And, uh, but, I mean, we got some of the guys on the team like that, so, I mean, I'm trying to help them all I can and do that, but anyway, <clears throat> uh, lastly, if you're like a teen in here and don't, don't get into the youth group, I mean, it, we have a great time, we have a blast, the matter of time, but uh, like if you're anybody in here and like we're all one big family and help us do everything, but uh, not just the youth, and uh, like if you're a youth in here and you have or are struggling through something, you can find somebody that can relate to you, I promise. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's a great group of people. And uh, like Pastor Steve says, it's not the building that's the church, it's the group of people that come together and worship that church. Right. so I didn't really know what it meant to like prepare for a trip. Um, but this year we, pre we started preparing for this trip probably um, two months before um, and it was witnessing the people and getting to know people and, or not necessarily know people but it, we can talk about anything with a stranger but we're scared to ask someone if they're a Christian or if they know the Lord. So we really talked about that with like the where it was booking everything before we left. So we knew that the trip was going to have something to do with witnessing. So as we left that Wednesday, we all piled in the vans. Um, that 15-seater van didn't have much air in the back <laughs> whatsoever, but we made it. And so, uh, as I said earlier, God never tells us where we're going. He tells you it's under 15 hours. And we've never been there before, so we all 
for four hours were guessing which state we were going to. We were all wrong, every single one of us, completely <laughs> wrong. I had no idea where we were going. But uh, we ate good, we listened to lots of music, we jammed out to Steve's uh, favorite song from the cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we got there on uh, Wednesday night and it was super late. Um, so we didn't, like we all went to bed, but we woke up super early on Thursday and we met Bruce and most of the time whenever you meet someone new, like their first kind of stand back and you know, hey, how are you get to know you? Not Bruce whatsoever. Bruce was like, hey, I'm Bruce. I need this done, this done, and this done. Let's get to it. And it was literally just like that. Um, but he is, he's definitely a man that is in an area of poverty and there's not, there, around here you see lots of churches. I mean, if you drive five miles, you're probably going to see at least ten churches, if not more. And up there it's not like that whatsoever. And uh, Bruce is, Bruce has a passion, Bruce has a desire to get God's word out and to do anything and everything that he can to help to help his church grow to what it used to be and um, help people come to know Christ. But it's amazing that, like, whenever we all stand up and we talk about our church family, some people really take for granted what our church family is. If we have a need here, someone's always there to help. Always, Someone's always there to lend a helping hand. And to the church that we went to, there wasn't. We went and we helped paint and put up... What'd you put on the roof? Vinyl siding on the roof. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we helped and we worked because no one in their church could help Bruce. No one could work to help him. So if we need, like we have work days here and we have people that are willing to come out and help, but Bruce doesn't have anyone that is willing to come out and help him. So we worked a lot. It was really hot, really hot. Um, <laughs> And uh, so we did that, but we also got to go to um, like help unload trailers at like this food place. Um, and it was just amazing to see like how grateful we really are. Like if we need to go to the store, then we get in our car and we go to the store to get food. And some people don't have that luxury. Some people have, can't just get in their car to go get food. So it really showed us how blessed we truly are. Um, one of my biggest, like one of the best moments was, well not necessarily the best moments, but uh, while we were going down the river, um, Ashton and Philip kind of made their way down the river. And so Dalton was going crazy, going back and forth from the river, like across the river. So he was going to go scare and go flip their tubes over. Well, Matt went to hand me his phone, and uh, somewhere along that way, it didn't make it from my tube to his tube, so we lost his phone and his truck keys in the river. <laughs> and everyone told me it was my fault, but um, they went scuba diving and found it. Um, but uh, well, probably my, <laughs> probably my uh, biggest takeaway was uh, the devotion that Joyce had. I know for us girls, it's always it's always the highlight of our trip. Um, there's always a bunch of tears shed and um, a lot of laughs, but there's also a lot of love and there's also a lot of comfort. And so, um, sometimes we don't always know why we go through trials in life or wonder why necessarily bad things happen to good people, but. It's always important to remember that God's plan is always bigger than your plan. Yeah. God always knows, always is bringing you through this. God's not going to let you go through something without Him being right there beside of you. And we may not always understand, but we always know that it's for His glory. And that He's always going to bring us through that. And so... I really do, like, that group of people right there is like my second family. We talk all the time, almost every single day. And um, Matt and Joyce are literally like second parents. I don't know what I would do without them. <laughs> they, um, they're they there for anything, uh, whether it's moral support, emotional support, a hug, a laugh, a cry, anything. So I just want to tell you guys thank you and that I love all of you. 
and that um, we had lots of fun on our trip. Uh, I wish all of you guys could come with us and experience it. Uh, Y'all probably think we were crazy afterwards. Um, after you've seen uh, all the boys' rooms and uh, <laughs> beds being pushed together and um, us girls dancing and singing, trying to practice for songs on Sunday. Um, I don't know if y'all seen the picture, but while we were in the hospital, um, Anna's leg was bleeding because she had fell. And so I was cleaning it up because no one would clean it up for her. And whenever Anna's doctor got in the room, she didn't introduce herself. She didn't say who she was. She came in the room and she immediately yelled at me and told me that I should not be putting hydrogen <laughs> peroxide on Anna's leg. And I was like, oh, it's fine. It'll clean it. Well, Anna came home and her leg got infected. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Don't, uh, don't let me clean up your leg because it might get infected. But we had a great time. Thank you for all of y'all for being our church family and supporting us. And uh, thank you to my Second family, and I love all of you.
these teams and um, one of the things that opened my eyes, anytime we ever do a BBS with Lynn, um, even if it's a church around here or if we go to sanctuary anywhere, um, is they don't have a church like ours. And um, I look around and 85% of the people in this church do something for our church, whether they stand on the side of the the sun or they give a meal or they, they work or whatever. Um, not all churches are like that. It's a, it's a honor when you go to another church and that pastor and wife are like, you know, you had not came. We just spent weeks painting the doors and painting the floors and I'm just like, wow. I can't even imagine the church was a lot smaller than this as far as the building. Um, we had more teens in the service than the actual congregation. Um, and before COVID and before the ball fields were built, um, they had like 250 kids at their BBS. And so that just goes to show you how, how things have changed. Um, and so this mission trip was not our normal. Bruce, Bruce wanted to protect the people up there where we were at, like because they were they lived like in a third world country, and so we didn't really get to go knock on doors. Plus, COVID changes everything, and um, we I have a patient at work, and he's one of the greatest soul winners I know, and he just said, do you just have to find a different way to fish? And I'll never forget him saying, I'm like, you're right, you know, we don't go knock on doors now, and, you know, hopefully one day we'll be able to, but it's, it's a different way of canvassing. One of the things we've been, we talked to them about before we went on the trip was like, you know, your, your testimony and witnessing and, and like growing a relationship with somebody, not just knocking on the door because we're not able to do that right now. But um, So not just on the trip, but in your daily lives and um, being able to share the gospel through that. Um, one of the things that I um, spoke with the girls on this time, I, I went down a brief um, road, uh, back, like back time, I guess back times before, because Bailey was young and she didn't know, so I went over a couple things, and then um, the Lord gave me purpose, and it wasn't like a, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 purpose. It was more like, you know, why did God create us? And so the verses that... Uh, I summed it up with at the end was Isaiah uh, 48, uh, 9 through 11. And it says, For my name's sake, is that right? Yeah. Okay. For my, for my name's sake will I defer my anger, and for my praise I will refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not, like, not with silver, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my how should my name be polluted, and I will not give glory to another. And then um, Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. I'm just going to read uh, 1 and 7. But it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. And this was like their core verse. Um, every, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, and I have formed him, yea, I have made him. And we can sum up these verses with our salvation is for God's sake, and he created us for his glory. And so that was um, what we wrapped up with, with just the girls. But your teens are amazing, and your teens are a reflection of our church. So our church is amazing, and your teens are amazing, and they represented our church very well. So you should be very proud of them. I don't get to talk much in class either. <laughs> uh, first off, I want to thank you, church, because they said it several times. The support that, that we feel as a youth group from the church is amazing. And you don't see that other places. Um, and so we just want to say thank you for uh, your giving and your willingness to pray for us because that's the only reason we're able to go and do what we were able to do. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep it real quick. I do want to brag on there. They are an amazing group. They are an amazing group. Um, they're hard-headed and, you know, they're teenagers, but they are an amazing group. 
uh, to see how that they uh, gel together and incorporate each other and everything and, and to see how they go. And, uh, and even when we got back, our Trinity had some stuff going on and Anna had her foot going on. Uh, and just to see, uh, we keep a group message going and just to see how they message each other and say, praying for you, uh, you know, you need anything, just, just encourage them. It, it, it's, it's, it's a group I don't believe like we've had before since we've been there, they're really, really close, and they really take, they really care for each other, uh, and it's, it's the only the Lord's doing. They're, they, they're close because I, they're, they're more focused on Christ, uh, and it draws them all closer together. And so, but uh, they, Bruce, the, pre, the pastor there, he is, he's a, uh, he's in his 60s, I believe, and he's got black lung from working in the mines, and so he kind of runs out of oxygen and, and things like that, and so, if we had not have gone up there, he would have been on the side of the building trying to put vinyl siding up, and they would have been painting, and him and his wife would have been putting chairs and doing all this stuff. And so it was a blessing to him, and he was ready for us to uh, go ahead and tell him when he's coming back next year. And, uh, but he's a, he's a character. He, he had nicknames for boys within two or three minutes of being there. And, uh, so some of them weren't very nice, but he still had nicknames for them. <laughs> but anyhow, so it was good. They, they worked. They did. They worked. They had a good time. Uh, we had fun. And uh, again, I just really, really want to thank you uh, for your support. And, and I thank you for your teams because Joyce is right there. Uh, they're a reflection of how good this church is and the work and the effort this church puts in. Uh, they do a good job. And uh, you ought to be proud of them and, and continue to pray for them and uplift them and, and things like that. Because it's a good group. From the loud ones to the quiet ones, they're all, they're all pretty good. Uh, but I tell you what, I, it's pretty they talked forever. Everybody good? Everybody good for five more minutes? Amen. Uh, I really thought the Lord gave me this message. I'll try to, I'll try to cut it short. Um, but and we were on the trip and, and seeing people that, you know, in different areas, especially you see the areas that say they're, uh, you know, the body of Christ. And even getting back and just seeing the way things are going and the way the thing that the society is. Uh, it was steering a message a week or so ago, a week or two ago, um, and the Lord just gave me this thought. And uh, I think there's an old BB King song, "The Thrill Is Gone." Is that right? Well, the Lord gave me this thought of the fear is gone, um, and he, he, he gave me this thought. And, and usually, when I get a chance to preach, I, I, he, I've got a couple maybe that I'm wrestling with. But for the last couple of weeks, I feel like he 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 really kind of impressed this on my heart. And, um, you know, we have fears. Everybody here has fears. We have, you know, fear. <clears throat> fear's not a bad thing, but we all have them. I think they she loves spiders. <laughs> they love them. And so everybody, we all have fears, right? We, we, we have fears of those things, and, but they keep, us, they keep us in check. You know, a fear of fire keeps us from getting in the fire. We know the consequences for that, the fear of that. The fear of, uh, the fear of heights, I don't think it's the fear of heights. The fear of heights is the fear of falling. You don't want to fall. So, you know, you have that fear of that, not to get too close. You know you're going to fall. You know, snakes and all these other things. We have those fears, but that fear of that keeps us safe. Um, but in the Bible, it, says, it tells us uh, in Isaiah, um, let's see here, uh, Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Let me flip over there. Uh, y'all got saved. I was going to make y'all flip all over the place tonight, but uh, <laughs> for time-wise, we're not going to do that. Uh, but Isaiah... Let's see if I can get there. Isaiah 41 and verse 10, uh, it tells us, uh, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Uh, be not amazed for, or, or dismayed, for I am the God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right, my right hand, with the right hand of my righteousness. And we as a church and Christians, we like, we like the stuff that in the Bible that tells us, you know, fear not. We don't have to fear. Uh, you know, we like that confidence that we get from that. But the thing about that is, that confidence that we get is coming. It comes from Christ uh, and who He is and what He's done for us. Uh, kind of a side note: I seen, sorry, Ryan, uh, these these shirts that we have. It says Jesus matters, and I was sitting up here and I seen them and I'm thinking. You know, over the last year or so, you hear all this Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, and one side says this and one side says that. Uh, when it comes down to it, it, none of our lives matter until we realize that God's life, Christ's life mattered first. Amen. And none of our lives mattered until His did. And so, uh, you know, uh, 
that's what our fears and stuff like that, I, it sounds good though, you, you know, we get that because of Christ, we don't have to fear. But when you give me that thought that the fear is gone, the problem is that our fear of God is gone. Right. And so uh, I got to looking at the word fear appears in the Bible 528 times. And so that just being in the Bible that much, it's a part of our lives and it's a part of that. But when it comes to the fear of the Lord, it's, it's gone in our society. You know, you look at the fear of any kind of authority is gone in our society. They don't think there should be. It's just that's gone. And there is no fear of the Lord. The way we live our lives, um, you know, it's, there's no fear there whatsoever. Um, I think when I was younger, there was a fear, you know, fear of dad when me and Tyler were younger. Not that he was going to, you know, we didn't have a fear. Like, if you look at my dog, I beat him so bad. If I get near him, he cowards. He's just waiting on it to happen. But we didn't have that fear of dad. The fear of dad was we knew that he was going to enforce the consequences if we messed up. So there was a fear that that authority was there and it was going to be there. And so we had that, that healthy fear of our dad growing up. And we don't have that of God anymore. We don't have that healthy, we don't have that fear that will drive us. It goes back to that, the, the stuff, the fire, the, the, that fear keeps us in check. Well, that fear of God and who He is keeps us in check. And we don't, our society has completely lost that. Right. Um, over in uh, Psalms, it tells us, uh, I'll turn there real fast, you don't have to turn there. Uh, over in Psalms, Chapter 33, um, it says, Amen. I wish I could get there. <laughs> <laughs> I even went through here and marked them, so I'll get there. There it is. 33 in verse 8. Um, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Yeah. Our all of Christ is gone. Right. We're, we're not in all of Him anymore. What are we in all of? We're in all of houses. We're in all of our cars. We're in all of, of movie stars, athletes. We're in all of this, and that's what we're in all of. And because of that, that's what we want. And then our fears are no longer, our fear is not God and what not the fear of the Lord. Our fear has become not being able to pay for something, not being able to buy something, not being able to keep this up, not being able to have that, not being able to do this, yeah. not being able to keep up uh, a certain status or a view in front of other people. That's our fear. And so that's what's driving us, and that's what's ruling our life, because that's what we're afraid of. We're no longer afraid of God, and so therefore He no longer rules our life. And so the fear is gone. Our fear in our life is gone. Um, in Genesis, uh, I, I, when He gave us, I got to thinking about this, and in, in Genesis, over in, in chapter 3, in, in the very beginning with Adam and Eve, uh, ch verse, chapter 3 and verse 7, it says... Uh, and the eyes of them were both, they were both open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And it said, and verse, skip down to verse 10, and it says, And he said, I hear thy voice in the garden, or I heard thy voice in the garden, this is Adam talking to Christ after he asked him, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And I got to thinking, what were they afraid of? Think about Adam and Eve up until that point. They had absolutely, they, they had never dealt with fear. They walked, when he early in, he said, and they walked with Christ in the cool, or with the Lord God in the cool of the day. They didn't have a fear, and then all of a sudden, because sin entered, right. they were afraid. Why? Right. Right. They didn't, you know, there was never, they didn't have anything to draw love. So what made them afraid of God all of a sudden? And I got to thinking about it, and um, I won't turn, there was some scripture I had there, but what they were afraid of is they saw what God created. They saw the power of God all around them. And all of a sudden they realized that I disobeyed Him. The one with all the, the, the all-powerful, I just disobeyed Him, and now He's here looking for me mm. for our walk. And all of a sudden, that fear set in. And that began to force them to make leaves and cover themselves and, and, and all that stuff. That fear began to drive them because they said, uh-oh, I see the power that he has, and that's what I'm scared of. I think about all like Abraham and, and the people throughout the Bible, Daniel and, and, and David, that all the Bible describes them as they feared the Lord. That's right. they, they didn't fear the Lord because he was going to smite 
smite them with something. They feared God because they understand, they understood who God was yeah. and the power that God had. And that's where that healthy fear comes from. Go. And it's gone in our life. Right. You know, you look at that, that fear of fire, that fear of snakes and stuff like that. We, tr we truly believe that if we stick our hand in that fire, we're going to get burned. But our fear of the Lord, I don't know that we truly believe God is sometimes who He says He is and He's as powerful as He is because we don't have a fear of Him. We'll go and we'll spend our lives at the bars and we will, we'll spend our out, you know, living like the world and it doesn't bother us because there's no fear because do we really think He is that powerful and He is the creator of all things. And so I got to, you know, He gave me that, but the fear is gone. But then a little bit later on after the, he gave me that thought, Steve Jacobs preached a message on hell for the men's meeting. Yeah. And I said, you know what? The fear is not only gone, the fear of God is not gone, it's not also only gone, but the fear of hell is gone. Yeah. We, don't, we just think of it as, as right. a story nowadays right. rather than actual, the literal burning hell. Uh, over in, the, I'm not going to turn there, but over in, let's see, I told you I wouldn't be able to argue read these notes. <laughs> Uh, I got to. I was reading something uh, yesterday, and it was an old article. Ted Turner, and Ted Turner said one time in the night, and it was back in the '90s, that he looked forward to going to hell, yeah. because that's where he was going, and he looked forward to it. That's one of the most ignorant statements, sure. because he don't know what hell is. That's if you right. truly know what hell is, there is no way you're looking forward that's to going. And so, you know, I, we don't truly believe that hell is what it is, or else we would be out here. That would motivate us to do everything we could to tell other one to make sure our life was where it was supposed to be with God, and we were right with Him. But that we told all these other people that were around us about Christ. Right. And so th that it's just that motivation is just not there, because in Matthew it talks about the furnace and gnashing of teeth and how horrible it is. There's no way that that right there shouldn't scare you today. Just the thought of that place, okay? And then the other thought I thought about with with uh, Adam and Eve is where did that other fear I mean because that was, that was fear to hide from him so they realized who he was but then they all of a sudden realized the separation from Christ That's right. from God they always had that walk with him and then all of a sudden there was something in between them and God that space was there they didn't know what to do because that relationship with God was gone it was hindered by the sin in their life and that began to scare them so bad because they didn't, that was the first time they felt that. And so I began to think, you know, they feared that separation, and we have no idea what that feels like to have no separation at all, no sin in our life, and then for it to be pulled away. We've been sinners since we entered this world. Right. So we don't really know what that fear is. But the thing about it is, is in uh, 2 Thessalonians, it talks about that, about hell is the lack of the presence of God. There is that, that presence of God in this world is, in hell is not there. And so that separation, I know Deb's talked about it in his sermons before, that separation from God, we don't even understand how bad that's going to be. Right. The fire's going to be bad, the intense, but the separation from the one true God for all eternity is what is the most, is this most scariest part of that. And so, as I began to think about that, you know, our fear is gone. And if our world is going to change, if anything is going to, if anything is going to change whatsoever, our fear of who God is has got to come. It, we've got to get that back. If we don't want to have to get it back, we've got to share that. And we've got to instill that in each other. We've got to instill that in them. The thought started, you know, I was thinking about them. I told them I get frustrated with them sometimes, but I get frustrated with my own life. That I sit here and I'm studying this word and I'm, I'm, I'm teaching it to them. And then I look at it and a month's gone since I studied that message. There's not really any change. That's right. So did I really believe what I was, what the Lord gave me to begin with? What, what He was showing me of the word? It didn't scare me enough to change it. And so um, in Luke chapter 1, it's the last place I'm going and, then I, and I'll, I'll close this there. But in Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 50. It says, and His mercy is on them that fear Him from generation to generation. And if you look at our generation that we're in now, they have no fear of it. Where did that come from? The generation before. And the generation before. And the gener they don't know what it is to fear God. They have no idea what it looks like to truly fear who God is. And the scary part about that one is 
the first, and it says, and His mercy is on them that fear Him. That mercy for this, that God has for this world is, going to, is about to run out. It's about, it's about done. Uh, I believe we're getting, with the things we see, we're coming down to the short rows. And the thing about it is, is we need to start living our lives back in the fear of God. And fear Him in everything we do. So that that fear motivates us to tell others about Him. It motivates us to live our lives based off of how powerful God is. And who He is, who He says He is. And so my question to you is, what is your fear in tonight? Are you fearing the Lord? Are you living your life? Like you fear the Lord because you fear the Lord? Is that your driving factor? Who God is? Or is this worldly stuff and the fears of this and that and the other, is that what's driving your life? Because I know in my own life I feel like the fear is gone. I, I, I say that because I, I don't, if I truly feared the power of God, my life would look so much different. Sure. And so my question to you tonight is what is your fear in? Are you, do you fear God? And so I ask you to you can stand with me real quick. Bow your heads. Close your eyes, Brian. Play something short here if you, if you want to. I know we've been here a while. But if you bow your heads and close your eyes tonight, I, again, if, you, if, if you're in here tonight and there's never been that time where you ask Christ to come into your heart and save your soul, you should be in here tonight trembling and scared to death because hell is, your, is the place that you're headed. Because the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And if you, if you have rejected Him, if you've never accepted Him, you're headed to eternal separation from the Almighty God. And I ask you tonight, if you've never accepted Him, that tonight would be that night. Don't go out of here because it could be your last chance. And so if there's never been a time that you've accepted Christ as your Savior, I ask that you would I ask that you would just raise your hand. Nobody's looking around. And I'm not going to call you up here and embarrass you. I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to pray for you. Has there ever been a time where you've not where you that you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? And then Christians, I want to ask you that where's your life? Where's your fear at? Do you fear God? Do you fear His power? How about do you fear hell enough to tell your family about it? Do you fear hell enough that they can end up going that lost friend of yours? Do you fear what kind of place that is enough to tell them about Christ? The altar's open here for a few minutes. If you want to come, come. Um, but where's your fear tonight? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time, dear God. I thank you for this trip. God, up here and had the chance to talk about, dear God. I thank you for each one of these teens, uh, dear Lord. I thank you for uh, what their willingness to stand for. Dear God, I pray that you would, uh, I pray that you just begin to continue to mold and, and, and shape them in the image you want them, dear Lord. Dear God, as their school year started, I pray that you would give them uh, just, just a renewed uh, amount of boldness to, to stand up for you, God, and, and the world they're living in. Dear Lord, I pray that you'd help them. I pray that you'd protect them. Uh, dear God, I pray that you protect the church and, and give us all that boldness, dear God, to, to, to tell others about you. Uh, help us to get a... Uh, help us to have that fear of what hell is uh, so that it motivates us, dear God, to, to go out and tell others about you, dear Father. And I thank you for, again, for all you've done. I pray that you continue to be with each person in here. Keep us all safe. Uh, and dear Lord, if there's one in here tonight, dear Father, that does not know you, uh, I pray that you, that you will not let them walk out that door, dear God, uh, without, without talking to someone uh, about how to, how, to, how to be saved, dear God. And again, we just thank you, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.